What's up, Droners? B here from Droner Tech, brought to you by RemotePilot101.com. And what we're gonna talk about today is, well, why ND filters? Why are ND filters important? Why do all these drone cinematographers always talk about, and cinematographers are like, oh, I need ND. Oh, ND, what is that? Well, let's talk about it. All right, so first of all, I am a drone cinematographer. I am not a director of photography. I wanna put that out there. There's a huge difference between those things. I am not a, I am not the person that can explain all the science of cameras to you to a T, to the best ability of like these top cinematographers. But I am surrounded by them, and I've been flying these drones and working with those guys for a while. So I'm gonna give it to you guys all the things that I know in layman's terms. So the ND filter in layman's terms is pretty much sunglasses for your drone. And the reason you wanna have sunglasses for your drone is because you always are, whenever you're using any type of camera, in, in this case, a drone camera, you always are looking to simulate the experience that you get if your eyes were actually where the camera was. You want it to feel like you're watching this. You want the camera to disappear and to feel like it's your perspective. And a lot of camera tricks allow that to happen. And the ND filter is what allows our eyes to be able to deal with a lot of light being brought into the lens in a way that our eyes would deal with it. Now, that sounds like a lot, but what really happens here is that what you're doing is you're looking to keep the highlights and the darks, the highs and the lows closer together so that you can able you can manage that image a lot easier so you don't have to have a higher shutter speed to be able to compensate for how much light is coming into your lens, AKA the sunglasses. And I have examples of this. So the first example is going to be the Mavic Air because the Mavic Air is a great drone. This is a basic drone camera that you're gonna be using. This is a very common drone camera. Does not have aperture control. It's just straight up, you got shutter, you got your shutter speed, you got your uh, ISO and you got your ND filters. But these first shots we're gonna watch, no ND filters and here's what you see. Um, as, we're, as we are going along this grass right here, you'll notice that the grass from the bottom of the screen, if you look really close, you'll see it's kind of hard for you to watch when you're watching this video. And the reason is, is because it's so crisp. Why is that grass so crisp? Like, if you were moving that fast along that grass, your eye naturally does a blur effect. That's just what happens when you move that fast because your brain doesn't process things that quickly. And it feels weird to look at it like that. It just feels weird to look at it. And it feels slightly unnatural. And what you're normally, like I was saying before, what you're normally trying to do is simulate what your eye is going to experience. Now let's do that exact same shot where we put the ND filter on it. What we did is put a uh, 32 ND filter on that from Polar Pro. And as you'll see, is that ND filter is actually making it so there is that blur effect on the bottom of the screen looking at that grass that feels like what it would actually feel like if you were flying along that little baseball field track and looking at it. As well as if you just look at all the things that are all, have whites in them or brighter colors, it feels less offensive to the eye. And overall, the image quality of this particular particular shot just feels and looks better. Now for full measure, I'm just letting you guys know the camera settings were almost the same for both of these. We are at 5600 on the white balance and we also did not shoot this in uh, log. We shot this with the colors that naturally came out of the camera and the ISO was at this uh, its natural 100. So this drone, these drone shots were as close as they can get. The only difference was, well, I said it earlier, the shutter speed. And that's the big thing that is different between the Mavic Air and the Mavic 2 Pro. So let's bring out the Mavic 2 Pro. Now this is the standard for single flyer drones that there is in the industry right now. If you're gonna just have a small single flyer drone, you don't get much better than the Hasselblad Glass and the Mavic 2 Pro. This is a really good camera. And one of the reasons why this camera costs so much than um, so much more than like a camera you get on the Mavic Air is simply because it has aperture control. That was the big deal of what happened when the Phantom 4 Pro came out, um, is that you could actually control the aperture. Now what is the aperture doing? The aperture is actually closed Closing the iris, allowing you to be able to allow a different allow, uh, levels of light, which is again similar to what's happening with your ND filter, but it's happening in a different way. And on the smaller camera, you don't have that. On this Mavic Pro, the excuse me, on the Mavic Air, you don't have any aperture control. All you can control is the shutter speed. And so these shots here are a little bit different because the shutter speed still remains at 50, but the aperture is all the way. Uh, all the way over to 11, which is as, as little light as you can let in. You can even notice on the bottom of the screen, there is a little bit less of the motion blur than what you saw even on the Mavic with ND filter. Now this image does look good though, because again, this camera is a much better camera. You don't necessarily need an ND filter for this drone. Um, we're not at a full, This I flew this at 10 a.m., so it's not as bright as it was gonna get, but we are on the peak of what this camera can handle without an ND filter, without us having to go up on the shutter speed. But why not? Let's see what we do here, guys. Let's go ahead and put the ND filter on this and see what it looks like. And 
as you can see, when we're flying over, we're doing these low flights over this grass, you can see just in general, the image quality just looks better. We're able to go back down to a 2.8 on the aperture and be able to still have the shutter speed of 50. And honestly, the image quality just looks better. This feels like a more professional shot. And this, this feels more like what your eye would see while you're flying. Now again, let's go back over to the Mavic Air because that's okay, fine. We're looking at the grass and we're flying over it fast, but I did another second shot just so you guys can see. And on the second shot, what I did is I started on this beautiful man here, as you can see. And what I want you guys to take a look at is as I rise up without this ND filter on with the Mavic Air right now, you're gonna see that there is traffic behind me. And the traffic, you'll notice, I want you to pay really close attention to the cars back there. Look at how they're moving in the frame. Now, you're still capturing all this at 24 frames a second, but how fast the shutter and how much, how much time the shutter has to capture that frame is changed when you have a higher shutter speed, and that's what we have right now. Tell me those cars don't look like they move a little bit unnaturally. You might not think it right now, but let's compare it. So we're gonna go ahead and put the ND filter on here, and we're gonna do the exact same flight. Man, he is pretty. Look at this guy. Okay, I'm sorry. But let's go ahead and fly it. We're gonna go ahead up. We're gonna get there, and as you can see these cars in the background, see what I'm talking about? A little, little bit of motion blur, because they are moving at 50 to 80 miles an hour. Your eye naturally has a motion blur to it, and that's what the shutter speed going up takes away from you. And just for the giggles of it, we're gonna go ahead and look at the Mavic 2 Pro as well. So let's go ahead and see, oh, look at this guy again. Man, can we get this guy an award? This is a mock. Okay, so as we fly up, as we fly up, we see, again, the traffic. Now, remember the aperture here is at the 11. Again, we're peeking out everything this drone can do, and it's not even the brightest part of the day. The brightest part of the day, we're gonna have to go up on our shutter speed, and we won't be able to do this. Um, but because we have a much more expensive drone with a much better camera on it, we're able to eke out this image that still looks pretty good. But, doesn't compare. Let's go ahead and pull out the uh, we'll pull out the ND filters for this one. We put an ND16 on this, and we put the aperture to a 3.5 this time, just to see what the difference would be. And guess what? As we said before, it looks natural. You're getting more of that blur, and you're getting more of a better quality image. ND filters make better images. If you want to talk about the first thing that people ask me about when they say, oh, I want to buy a camera drone, blah, 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 the first thing I say to every single person is, isn't how many batteries did you get? Isn't how much flight time have you had? Isn't like, oh, well, do you have your camera set up this way? The first question I always ask is, did you buy ND filters? Because this is the easiest way to ensure that you are getting cinematic grade quality out of whatever kind of camera you have on your drone every single time you fly. And this is why. So check it out, please. Let's get into the let's get into debate on the in the comments of why this is important, what it means to you, and how much do you guys see what I'm talking about and the difference between these images. All right, joiners, thank you guys so much for checking in with me on this very camera focused time. That was really that was intense. And if you want to see more things like that, we got them. You got to like, you got to subscribe, you got to follow. You know, share the post. Why not? And if you would, as I normally like to ask. Make sure you stay fly.